Prophet said, a believer is not stung in the same hole twice. If you messed up once with one because of something, because of some circumstances or whatever it is, you found weakness in one way, don't put yourself in the situation to keep getting stung and finding weakness in that same way over and over and over again. And the third thing that I'll leave you with is a dua. And I pray that each and every single one of us will analyze their relationships as they leave this gathering. The brothers and sisters who are not married and the brothers and sisters who are married. That you'll analyze your relationships and analyze what is permissible or what is not permissible about those relationships and stop things before they get out of hand. A dua from our Messenger وسلم, which is very profound. And he was asked for a comprehensive dua and he taught us this extremely comprehensive dua. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Oh Allah, I ask you for guidance. But it's one thing to be guided in knowledge. Hidayah fil ilm wal-rushtu fil amal. Guidance is in knowledge and then there is guidance in action. So it's one thing to be guided in knowledge. But sins corrupt our heart and they corrupt our mind and eventually corruption in our action could even corrupt our knowledge. So the Prophet said, Say Allahumma ni as'aluk al-huda wa tuqa Ask Allah for taqwa, the ability to abandon sin, to stay protected from sin. Taqwa is literally to be shielded from sin to be shielded from those things that would compromise you being on that path. And it's really interesting because in the du'as of the Prophet ﷺ, when he tells us to ask for guidance, he rarely only specifies guidance, but there's something else after the guidance to keep you on it. Allah mahdini wa saddidni. Oh Allah, guide me and keep me on that path of guidance. So he said, say, Allah man yas'aluk al-huda wa tuqa. Because the scholars say that a lack of taqwa will eventually corrupt your, la- your hidayah as well. A lack of taqwa will lead to a lack of hidayah as well. It'll take you off the path as well. And then the second two, Allah man yas'aluk al-huda wa tuqa wal afaf. Modesty, to be protected from fahisha, from sa'a sabila, that dark path, to be protected from wickedness, to be protected from those things. I ask you for protection, modesty, al afaf wal ghina and to be self-sufficient. Why? When you look in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, the top two things that usually lead to the corruption of an individual. Either money or zina, or both. So Al-Afaf wal ghina are things that we seek protection, that we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as means of protection. To fail in one usually will lead to a failure in the other. Because once a person, if a person starts to feel poverty, and ghina is a feeling inside, a feeling of being sufficed. It's both physical and it's a feeling because some people have a lot from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're not feeling fulfilled. Some people, mashallah, they've got, they've got the, the, the American dream. They've got the, the spouse, the kids, the, the house, whatever they call the American dream, all right? Though I'm sure the American dream is always an evolution as well. But some people would have everything. You look on the outside, mashallah, a picture perfect life, but they're not fulfilled. They don't have ghina inside their hearts that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, to feel suffice. And when you don't have that, it usually will lead to a compromise of your modesty. So say, Allah man yas'alak al huda wa tuqa wa al afafa wa al ghina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put those traits inside of us, protect us and protect our families from the, from the scorn of zina, protect us from anything that would lead to us falling out of favor with him or lead to us to oppress his creation.